and you are good to go. Okay, um, so this is the Tuesday, July 12th meeting of the HPC, Historic Preservation. Um, so first, if we can just review last month's minutes. You had exactly enough to be able to approve the minutes. Yeah, they look fine to me. Is our uh, council liaison going to be make with us, Emily? I she she has all her information, so I mean she didn't tell me she okay. wasn't attending, so I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, I move we accept the minutes. Second. Okay. All those in favor? I can Aye. 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 Is there any opposed? And Jay has to abstain because she was not here at that meeting. Oh. I was just trusting all my <laughs> partners here, Mara. No. If they said they were okay, then we see. Yeah. Okay, so moving on, we do have a public hearing. 35 Mason, it's a certificate of appropriateness request to demolish an accessory structure in the Webster Park Historic District. Is there someone here for this? It's supposed to be. Um, you know, I, I looked over it and um, I drove by there. And I mean, it looks pretty clear cut to me, but I thought there was just one could be important distinction is that it says. Well, so that, I'll, I'll stop you for a second. We have to go through a very formal okay. process for this one because it's in the historic district. So okay. we do have to go through. Each of the items, and then there's supposed to be someone here. Wait a minute, wait a minute. There's an attendee. Oh, it's Emily. We're going to move her over. Um, but that's not the uh, who I was looking for. Um, there's a formal process. We have a, a set of steps that we have to go through, okay. um, but there is supposed to be someone to come speak in on the project if there isn't someone here to speak can it still go forward um technically it can um you know technically it can if there's no questions so yes um so we'll open the public hearing so first start with your script which is the second sheet the first sheet's just your reminder of your different steps to follow Okay, um, welcome to the meeting of the Historic Preservation Commission of the City of Webster Grove. This commission recommends the City Council the adoption of ordinances designating single structures or sites, portions of structures, groups of structures, landscape elements, works of art or integrated combinations thereof having a special historical or architectural interest or value as landmarks or historic districts. Uh, this commission reviews applications for certificates of appropriateness to remove or demolish one designated landmarks and two structures within historic districts. In addition, the commission reviews applications for certificates of appropriateness before any of the following actions may be taken to a landmark property or to a property located in a historic district. One subdivision, two boundary adjustment, or three lot split. In making this determination, the commission sits as an administrative body and by ordinance, hears the applicant and any other evidence that may be pertinent. In order to accommodate the schedules of all applicants, the commission requests that all persons wishing to speak limit their comments to evidence regarding the historical significance of the proposal. Above all, please be concise and to the point, comments voicing nothing more than general opposition to an application will not be tolerated. Applicants are granted 10 minutes, not including time used to respond to questions of the commission. To ensure that other persons who wish to present evidence are heard, the commission limits the comments of individuals to three minutes. Groups of three or more shall elect a spokesperson who shall be limited to seven minutes. We request that each of you adhere strict, strictly to these 
time limits so that each applicant can be heard within a reasonable amount of time. And if you wish to speak, fill out a speaker card. I guess if there's anyone on there, raise a hand. Yeah, and we had been being a little less formal with the speaker cards, but yes. All right, thank you. If you want to follow what the various steps are on that, on this one, that one right there. So, um, so we already opened the meeting. Do we need to do a roll call? No, we're already good on that. Um, and that what I read was the introduction. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we are here to review 35 Mason Avenue, a uh, public hearing to demolish the accessory structure. Um, the pur pur purpose of this public hearing this evening is to determine if the primary structure and property located at 35 Mason Avenue should be issued a certificate of appropriateness to demolish the accessory structure. Is there anyone who wishes to speak in favor of this proposed demolition? I do, <laughs> <laughs> except I cannot speak to the historical nature of the building, which sounds like that is the appropriate. Um, I think your comments are helpful though. Okay, so I'm a neighbor and my uh, property. So go ahead and say. My name is Lee Ann Manuel. I live at 45 Mason. So I live on the north side of the property. And um, the buildings in question are within view of pretty much every part of my house. I just noticed my upstairs bathroom, where we face their lot and these buildings were outside, we face these buildings. Um, and uh, the roof is caved in on the um, pool structure and the odd angled, uh, I don't know what value that little odd, you know, that is, but um, I think there's mold on uh, all three of the buildings. So it's very unsightly and uh, just continues to deteriorate as they've been uh, left. And there was a raccoon just the other day. So uh, any sort. Yeah, first one for a while, though, oh, I will wow. say. So uh, I speak in favor of any, uh, this would be an improvement and uh, to the, from our point of view. And if you just want to keep going down, if there's no one else, there's no one on Zoom. Okay. Um, so public comments. Um, okay, uh, questions of speaker by commission members, questions only, no comments. The first, this is normally where you would question the applicant, um, but we don't have an applicant here. And if you don't have questions of the applicant, you can still move forward. It's not that it's It can still move forward unless there were concerns where you wanted questions about how certain things. I mean, you can put some um, requirements on it if there was something that you felt was important. Um, but this is the point where you would ask questions, but there's no one here to ask questions of. So you could go on to the next part. Okay. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in favor of this proposed demolition? This is our, or, oh, the no, uh, is not yet. We're okay. Not yet. Okay. Is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition to this proposed demolition? Okay. I think at this point we'll close the public hearing. And with all of our discussions beyond this point uh, relative to this matter, needs to be discussed among commission members only. And we don't ask any further questions on this paper. I missed my chance. You've closed it. You have the opportunity to open it back up if you want to add 
add any more if you want to ask for any more information. And then should for some reason the applicant show up, you do have the ability to open the hearing back up again. I mean, we can open it back up. I'm just questioning the second picture on the top row. I don't believe that is a picture of, is that, is that a picture of the property? I think so. What? It, 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 it's a, a glamour shot of it, but yeah. Yeah, it looks like it's straight on from the house itself. Yeah, it's the bottom left looks like the corner. I was I drove by there and that does oh, all right. I'm sorry. Yeah. I have never seen that thing. So oh, yeah. sorry. Excuse me. Okay. If you want to close the hearing right. back up, we'll close the public hearing. Um, so we have all the evidence entered. So it's open for discussion. So you will actually have to enter the evidence. So um I have on the PowerPoint for you. Um the determination factors that you're supposed to discuss. There's two slides of those. Um, and then at some point we do have to enter and because we do have the PowerPoint, you wouldn't have to read all of these out. We used to read all of these items out, but this would be the exhibit list when we get to that point that you do need to okay. identify that we're entering all the exhibits. So I'm gonna go back so that you can have some conversations. If you wanna go to questions first, and then when you are making a determination, go through the factors. Yes, first off, did anybody have any questions? Um, I have a, a question, and I think what might be an important clarification is that um, the request for demolition and the public notice state the public hearing is to demolish the accessory structure at 35 Mason Avenue. Oh, I think. It's yeah, that's, okay. but I think it's important to point out that this does not include the detached garage, which is a contributing structure to the historic district. It, uh, per the owner's request, it is only for the uh, the one highlighted the in old, yellow, uh -huh, the old pool house, and it's oh, and attached. The, there's a little shed, shed, and it's attached shed addition. Um, so it is, those are the only structures that are in the uh, request for demolition. So just, just to make, yeah, because like, when I was reading through everything, I was like, oh, wait. Yeah. Yeah. So I just you know, want to make sure that that yes. is clear. That is completely. Yes. You had mentioned you had driven by also. Was yeah. there another comment that you had? Um, well, it just, um, I know this was also um, uh, is in the process of going through ARB and, and you know, obviously. It'll be at Architecture Review Board next Thursday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yes. So it'll be Architecture Review Thursday. Board next Thursday. Um, the hearing sign will be going out uh, before the end of the week. Um, it's a pretty substantial addition renovation. Um, both adding a very large addition to uh, the whole back frame addition is coming off of the house um, and just the main structure is remaining and the detached garage is remaining and then they're building an addition onto both the side and rear of the house, wraparound porch, uh, attached garage doors to side entry garage doors with a half story above it attached to the house with the back addition. Um, and then the garage right now is staying as is. But that hearing will be next Thursday. Has there been a tree study? Um, they do, yes. The tree preservation plan is already in and had to be in, in order for it to get on the ARB agenda. So yes. And will that be discussed at the ARB meeting? It usually isn't discussed at ARB because we don't have, we do have a landscape architect who is sometimes on as an alternate member, um, but our city arborist is the one who does the review of those plans. And they would have been on um, last Thursday except they were making too large of an addition and it didn't meet zoning and I wouldn't let them go until they came into compliance with zoning codes. 
That seems to be where the action is. It's next Thursday. <laughs> you know. Well, I will, I mean, I guess you probably know I live at 25 Mason on the other side. The manuals live on one side, I live on the other side. There's nothing historic about these two structures. They're they're falling apart and they were built in the uh, what 1985, I think is what we read in here. It's, it's pretty recent. And uh yeah, and they're I, I don't see any reason why, from a historic standpoint, these mm -hmm. should remain. Regarding item two, I, I think that um, having those structures um, stay in place would definitely decrease the market value of the property as they are severely distressed. Let me know if you guys want me to move to the second slide. Of. There's also the structural soundness under number five. Mm -hmm. And um, just as a note, the evidence of deterioration, which is in the packets, they have recently bought it. The deterioration has been the previous owners um, and the, I, said, I should say, lack of previous owners living on the property. Does anyone have any other questions or feedback? Is the ARB uh, process a public? Because it's in a historic district, yes. So okay. what happens is they will, the item will come before the ARB. The ARB will first have a conversation with the applicant and discuss the, the project. They did go on as what we call informational only last Thursday to start to get some of the feedback about the historic guidelines and how the addition meets those historic guidelines. And then once they're finished with their question, they will open it up to anyone who is in attendance who would like to hear about the project. Also, because the plans are already in um, and ready for going to the ARB, anyone who wants to come and uh, see them, they are um, open records at the planning department. And that's starting tomorrow? Or yeah, starting time. starting yeah now. already yeah. now okay yes so anyone in the pub if anyone anyone who wishes to come, anyone period anyone who wishes come. to come in and see them they can come in and see these submittal yes and if we end up getting a lot of people coming to see this submittal I could probably scan them and upload them we don't normally we don't have the same agenda uh, we don't upload the Airbnb agenda there's too many projects with too many varying sizes and shapes of plans, it would be too much staff time. It's a little, little different on that. But yes, the public can speak um, with any questions or comments or concerns. Yes, very rarely do we have anyone show up for them. Yeah. They usually open the hearing and close the hearing, but um, yes. And it should be, if I remember correctly, it's a short agenda compared to last, last meeting had 20 items on. Um, this meeting, I think, only has six, um, and it should be the first item. We always do the hearings first in historic districts, so it should be, I think, the first item on the agenda. I think we only have one item in the historic district. We have one that didn't show up last meeting, but other than that, they'll probably go on second. Will you be there, Carol? Okay. Good. And Angela isn't here tonight, but she should be there, too, I believe for ARB also. Any other questions or feedback? Does anyone want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the demolition request for the accessory structure at 35 Mason Avenue with the clarification that the applicant is seeking only to demolish the old pool house and its attached shed. I'll second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there anyone opposed? All right. 
Thanks, Thursday. Uh -huh. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Do we have any visitor comment? No visitors. Okay. Um, so new business. No new business. Go on to the old business. Um, actually, before you go to the old business, I know you have sent some information about Grant. Oh, wow. I forgot about that. Um, Hold on a second. I can stop share for a second. I can go in and see. Oh, can I? Can, let me see if I can get into my email from. Yep. I go in. Uh, let's see if I go into sent items. Sent. It was on Friday, July 1st. Um, it's in the CLG. Oh, thank you. Yes, CLG. CLG News. Okay, so let me do this. I'm going to share this screen just so that Emily can also see what we're talking about. Um, so I, we are part of, um, uh, we are a CLG, um, which is um, uh, a local government entity, which establishes us being a, having a historic commission and being a, a historic uh, city that has historic um, designations. Um, and they send me emails on a pretty regular basis of different things. This was the first one I've seen in a while that was pretty extensive that I was kind of interested in. They're anticipating giving out around $200,000 in grants in the next financial year. And the pre-applications are due by September 30th. Um, there's a virtual wor workshop coming up on August 9th um, where they're gonna walk through um, anything that you might want to do and to talk through what might qualify. Um, and since we do not, and it even says up here, um, do you have a neighborhood that could be a historic district? So for example, not necessarily our lustrums, but like if we were going to do something related to, we've talked a little bit about Tuxedo Park, possibly being a historic district or something, but we need additional funds to um, fund someone to go and start writing that nomination form or someone to go take the photographs or someone to do some of those other things, that's something that could be asked for. Um, the only thing to be rem to remind you of is that the grants from the, um, that are grants to CLGs, um, you really have to follow all the steps to make sure that you can get the money back. And we did have some problems in the past. Um, we had money that we received um, in order to put on some really great um, uh, uh, lecture series, um, but they didn't always, the members didn't always follow what they're supposed to do paperwork-wise, so I ended up having to kind of go back and spend hours trying to make sure that we didn't lose the money that we were supposed to be gaining from that, so it's just one of the things that you have to remember is it's great to get that money, but we have to have people that are going to track it properly, understand how to, you know, that what counts in terms of um, volunteer hours and time. You had to have forms that you had to fill out every time someone, you know, helped put the put the event together. How they the the speakers, all of those elements were pretty important. Um, sorry, different <laughs> emails are popping up. Um, so all of those are, are important to think about, um, but if someone wanted to um, go to do the virtual workshop, um, I can check and see if I'm available to also attend the virtual workshop, but it would be something to think about. And it also is something to think about that if it doesn't make sense for this year, that they would potentially have another round the following year that we might have more time to prep for. Um, but I wanted, yes, thank you for bringing that up because I had sent it over so we could discuss it. Is that a typical amount of money, the 200000 if we were 
looking at potentially next year instead of this year? Oh, you mean in terms of how much they've given of how out? How much in the they've past? given out? Uh -huh. I don't think they've ever given us an email that said how much they've given out in the okay. past. Um, I know that when we did the um, when we did the lecture series, mm -hmm. I want to say we received maybe fifteen thousand, maybe twenty thousand. I know it counted. It covered like renting the space at Webster University, doing posters. Um, flying someone in for the lecture to do the lecture. Um, and I think it was a multiple lecture series. So it covered multiple. It's been a number of years. So, and I wasn't the liaison at that time. One of my staff members was. So it was, I didn't pay as close attention until I was the one trying to make sure that we didn't lose our money and our sure. funding. So um, I would say that that might be a pretty, similar number in, in future years, but you just never know who's going to ask for a really big right. project. And who is responsible for doing all the legwork on the, this grant stuff? So it's mainly this group okay. or hiring, like someone hiring someone. So um, when they did the, um, there was a new Webster walk that's been done in the last number of years. That Webster Walk, um, which was of North Webster, mm -hmm. um, the group hired a professional to write and do the research on all of the little blurbs for North Webster um, and, uh, and then helped, they had someone else help put it together. And then the money um, was used, we already had someone who produced them. So there was kind of a combination, it was a little bit of staff time um, but not much staff time. And then mainly just the group reviewing what was being submitted, reviewing what the professional had put together. Um, on other things, we've had like one member take on a project. So at the public library, there's this beautiful um, tree in the, in the library that has plaques for each of the historic districts and each of the historic structures. Um, and that was all organized again by the Historic Preservation Commission one of the members took it on, got bids for someone to make the big Webster tree, and then to find out how to get the plaques made. And then I have uh, other little blanks <clears throat> so that if we nominate a new district, we can add something onto the tree. Um, they also did another project. Um, there's been a series of projects over time. I know the lecture series was one of them. Um, we also did a, um, a monument for the former um, Douglas School um, in the location up by Douglas Manor. And then uh, same thing, one of the members took it on, helped put together the research and the information, got the bids from a monument company to find out how much it would cost. But then I was the one who put in like, took care of the payments and did some of the other stuff like that. That's probably the most recent <laughs> one is the monument in front of Douglas School. Yeah, that one and the tree were about the same time. Were they? Okay. Yeah. I was paying yeah. for both of them at the same time. Yeah. And right now, your budget for Historic Preservation Commission is only $1,000 to do, you know, some small things. Does that include if, if Lustrum moves forward and we do a pamphlet? Would that include that, making a pamphlet? It potentially could. It just depends on... Um, if it's doing something smaller, um, I think you could get, you could possibly get someone for that amount. Um, it'll be tight. Um, and then the printing is actually rather expensive for the bigger books that we had. Um, and I do have some printing budget, but most of my printing budget has diminished. Um, so we would have to kind of see what we had or whether we started it as virtual only. Um, because obviously we save a lot of money doing the virtual, but we would probably maybe want a small run um, of hard copies. Um, we'd have to think about that. I'm going to stop sharing this for now, but if there's, um, if people want to look at their calendars and just see like what it entails and whether it makes any sense, um, I'm looking really quick at my calendar to see how July, August, 
I'm looking at August 9th to see if I can even attend. Um, it's Tuesday at 10 a.m. I could probably put it on my calendar to attend, but that would just be me letting I, you all know. I know for certain I cannot attend that. Yeah, that's kind of hard because it's in the middle of the business day for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, I'll I'll um, I'll zoom in on that. Okay. And, you know, it would be great if there was a potentially not maybe for this year, but like going ahead with Tuxedo Park. Um, when I was doing architectural work, I always did the architectural part of the historic renovations and the tax credits, and I did all the tax credit paperwork, but I hired an architectural historian to research and write the National Register nomination. She's fabulous, and um, yeah, so if, if we could Maybe if there is another round of grants next year and kind of see what it would be um, entail and go for it, that would be fabulous to be able to, you know, hire a, an architectural historian with grant money and uh, do a, a National Register District for Tuxedo Park. That would be fabulous. Oh, thank you, Emily. So, um, so I'll send out, um, I'll read, well, it's all in your email of how to register. So if anyone is able to register, that should be in your email. And you said it was on July 1st that I sent it. I just already closed it. Um, and, um, and I will try to put it on my calendar to attend also. And then that occurs before our next meeting it does so i think it's the same day. it's the same day yeah oh, it but it occurs before as right. in early in the morning <laughs> yes but we can put it on the agenda of new business to discuss grants either for this coming year or the following year okay. so the pre-applications are due um at the end of september right so that would be a pretty pretty quick burn for us mm -hmm. yeah But if we start thinking about it now and know what the application is, it, we could use that as a secondary project and pull together something for our potential grant. Okay. Okay, so um, that moves us on to old business. Have a slide for old business. Well, or enter the slide for information on city website. So uh, education about preservation, was that any? I didn't print more hard copies of it just because there was so yeah. much, but um, I could actually uh, keep going around back and forth. Sorry for bouncing around. Um, I'm gonna go to the city website, to the agenda, and I can actually pull up the information. And we can just put it on here. Um, so we have- the link more oh i've got it too if you want me to share it oh i've got it um i was i'm going to it right now and i'm going to go back and share screen to you so here's what we had in the packet um which was information that was on the city website now um and there was a conversation about maybe getting it updated and finding the right places. And then there were some examples that a couple of members had suggested about other people's sites um, that had information that might work well to kind of work. And that's where we had left off at the last meeting. Weren't we also discussing to the city website get redesigned? Yep. Or so, um, so this is the redesign. Um, and then I know there's some conversations. So like if you go to, um, 
So if you just go in general to historic or historic preservation, you get the walk, you get legislation, but there is a historic preservation page. Let's go to here. So under historic preservation, which was found under, if I remember it was community, historic preservation in Webster Groves, benefits of historic preservation, researching the history of your home, the commission and the walks and, oops, I did not mean to just jump to that. Um, sorry, I'm bouncing around. Community, um, there we go. And then it has the historic Webster walk, education districts. So there, there's a number of links already over here. And I think there was a conversation that maybe community wasn't where, I know Angela said she felt like she didn't know to look in community to find historic information, um, but just because of the way that we've set up the website, and it's been set up for a while like this, um, we sort of have government, we have the specific departments of the city, um, we have a lot of, of things about just businesses, contractors, and then there's the I want to, which is sometimes it's like, I want to apply for a liquor license, or I want to register as a contractor, so that's supposed to be like helping people find specific things that people normally like apply for. So that's why I was left under community with other things about events and parks and our preservation, sort of about what the community kind of comes together as. But if there's a better place for it, or if there's more information, like this is the general page, and then it has different things, link to the historic preservation in Webster, link to benefits of historic designation, and then some of these, again, I think are kind of old. Um, but there is like a, a benefits page, but it's it's long. It's really long. And people are probably just going to be like, eh. And it's not really, I don't know. I don't think it's nicely formatted. I think it's a little simplistic. Um, what happens if you go to, I want to, and then you go to um, explore history? So get, it is. It uh, does pull up that. Yep. Yeah. Goes to. I I mess around with it myself, and I didn't find any. I didn't have any trouble finding it myself, but I've worked on web pages, so <laughs> I kind of knew what I was doing. Um, and they kind of have it. It also stays over here on this side. Um, but I think we talked about like this is one of the ones we really like. The frequently asked questions really needs to be updated. Um. It's from 2002. Who originally oh, wow. put those together? Um, so that was the former building commissioner. So he was the liaison. He loved being the liaison to historic preservation. Like that was one of his favorite things to do. And when he retired, um, actually before he retired, as he was like finishing up some different things, I took over. Um, and we were trying to streamline things a little bit. It had gotten to the point where the list on the agenda of old business and the potential projects had become like this long mm -hmm. and nothing was ever taken off. And then, um, so when I took over, we tried to finish the tree, finish the monument for Douglas um, School, and then we did the text amendment. So that was a pretty big undertaking, which took a while. Um, and then obviously we're now like, here's what, what do we do next? Like what are our next things to do? But I think this is an important um, thing that we really need to update some of these. Um, but there are, you know, there's there's quite a few on here compared to some of our other pages. It's quite a few things that you can link to because um, it's important for Webster. Mm -hmm. I haven't been through that information since the website was redone. And I will say I didn't expect to see it in community. And I guess just because of my background and where I come from, I was looking for it in um, planning. Planning and development. Yeah. And I so um, I did have to fish around a little bit. But really, the basic information that's there, I thought, was pretty good. I mean, some of the formatting and stuff looks a little outdated. But the basic information, I thought, was um, rather well written and it, it's written in, um, what would you say, a sort of a friendly voice, which I think is good. You know, it doesn't sound too official or anything. So um, yeah, I had to fish for it a little bit, but there's a lot of good stuff in there. And if we do want to cross link, I mean, we can always ask them to put additional links to this page from planning. Could always happen. Um, 
It's always an opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't hurt to have it more than one place. The link, anyway. And thank you for um, having the preservation guidelines on there because that that's uh, very helpful. Yeah, yeah. We had a lot of people. It was in an odd spot, and then it wasn't on there, and then yeah. So they're on there now. Um, whenever someone um, goes to the architecture review board, a lot of them are complaining that they didn't know there were guidelines. Um, mm. So uh, we are we made sure that they're in here now. And they're in. So there's also we have a document center. Um, actually, let's go here. For some reason, when you are on the main page, the document center is right here, which makes it easy. But in the document center, there's um, a lot of different uh, bits of information. But under historic preservation, we've put all the different documents. So the various guidelines are in here. Um, and then some of the other older elements are, are in here. I mean, if really, if everyone's fine with what we have, it just needs to be reformatted or maybe simplified down, we could do that. But I think we, we had a conversation about whether maybe it, we didn't have the right things on the website. So if someone feels that there's something else, let us know. I think reference to the new ordinance would be helpful. Okay. And having your name on would be good, good to have on. Yeah, I, I found it pretty easy to read too. Mm -hmm. I pulled up the benefits of historic designation before um, a couple times in the past just to kind of read through it. And I think what I find is it it does explain like, hey, you can historically designate your property. That doesn't mean you are going to be completely limited to what you can do. I still wonder if it could be maybe worded a little differently because I, I don't know if like like if we are going to pursue a historic designation for say Tuxedo Park or Lustron or Joyville, um, you know, that's something that we're going to have to uh, make known to any of the homeowners that we approach about this. And I just wonder if somebody is being approached about this that they weren't initially thinking of doing, how would it sound that like, would they believe this or does it have to have something that kind of makes it seem more beneficial if you do this. Um, so that's just one thing that I kind of thought about if we were gonna revise that document, especially if we're talking about in the future pursuing a, a, a historic designation. And so I guess if we would decide to like revise that, is that something that we work on individually outside of our meetings and then compile, bring in what we've done, however you want to do it. Um, yeah, if one person wants to take it on and others review it, if different people want to take different sections of it and divvy it up, lots of options. Can you open that one? Mm -hmm. How many pages is that currently? Five. Yeah, I think it's just, it's in an older formatting with like this random, you know, sort of <laughs> clip art and a couple of things like that. Yeah. But, yeah. And um, I mean, so here's the thing. If, if all you wanted to do was rework what's here, um, it might be something we could ask uh, Jenny Starkey if she was able to reformat it in all of our branding that we do now and like reorganize it. And then but if, if it needs to be rewritten, that would be something that we would need to give her that additional text. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I can explain to her that I'd like that we'd like to have it formatted with, you know, the new, the new branding and the colors and the other things that we have. And then she can also, um, it can be promoted on 
Facebook or Twitter or Instagram of, hey, you know, here's these guidelines and, you know, here's some information in case someone has a question about it. Those kinds of things can be further promoted. And I even thought if there could be like actual examples of properties or neighborhoods that have been historically designated and whether that's, you know, word of mouth from those homeowners or any kind of information about how that project occurred and the benefits of after this happens. Um, I feel like that would give a little bit more peace of mind up front if we're trying to do something like this. I, I agree, Ann, because I, you know, I, I think we probably all run across that there's so many misconceptions mm -hmm. about people are like, oh my gosh, if you do that, I'm going to have to have house tours or just things that are just not correct. But, you know, insurance they, will go up. They That's when we heard with Century um, plaques a lot in the historical mm -hmm. society. When you have trouble with any renovations. Yeah, mm -hmm. if I want to put a mm -hmm. porch mm -hmm. on or if I right. do this, yeah. I can't. And right. There was somewhere, because I, I reviewed a lot of the information, but I don't remember exactly what was where, that was um, addressing, dispelling common misconceptions. Yes. And I thought that was really important because... Um, I think that's this one. Um, what exactly does it mean? What are the advantages? Yeah, it was I, it was another document and it was written by somebody that wasn't local. Oh, okay. So that would have been in our packet. Yeah. Um, because we so wait, it's further down. This was an example that Michael had suggested. Yeah, maybe this. Um well, let's see if I can find where it was. Page nine, maybe. Oh, this is a series of myths. Yes. yes so that, that was, I thought that was really important because mm -hmm. when I've done public information sessions and public hearings on um, historic designations, so many people come in so upset. I mean, and you could tell they've been like really upset, and really worked up for a long time. And you just kind of hate to see people in that state over some incorrect information. Yeah. So um, I think that um that's a really important thing to maybe include that information mm -hmm. um along with you know maybe a link about benefits and then um however would be a diplomatic way to say it common misconceptions or something what it um, is and what it is not yes kind yeah. of um simplification i think that that would help uh put a lot of people at ease if they had that information up front instead of, um, you know, word of mouth uh, misinformation that gets people upset. The number of phone calls I get asking about how to get their paint color approved. Oh, is well, sorry. You see it on I wish you would have looked at all mine before time. I painted. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I get, we get calls at least once a month, if not more. Um, thinking that because they're in a historic district that we have to approve their paint colors. And I'm like, nope. Um, you know, if you really want to paint it purple, go for it. There's nothing that I can say about your paint colors. Um, and then they're always extremely surprised. So it is, there's a, a number of myths out there. So um, I will have to go back and see where this one came from. It was a link that I know Michael had found and then we, I just printed it out and put it in the packet. Um, we could try to see because I think some of these are slightly done in here mm -hmm. um, to, a, to a certain extent and are, tried, are trying to focus it a little bit more as local, but maybe it's a mix between the two. Yeah. I think if I'm not mistaken, I think at the bottom of that information, um, about the top 10 myths, I think there was um, a, a name of the author or some a little bit about the author. Was that it? Oh, Jen? Principal City Planner and Manager of the City of Los Angeles, Office of Historic Resources. But yeah, there was a link somewhere. Okay. I, I'm pretty sure I have the exact link of where I pulled it from because Michael emailed it to me when we were in our last meeting or two meetings ago. He sent the link uh, to my email address.
Yeah, so I mean, I'll take a read through that, but I think definitely the formatting needs to be changed up. And again, maybe if we can add a little bit more information about, you know, how, the benefits of designation and if there's any examples. And I mean, I think that would be a great idea if we have this kind of updated to, you know, send it out to social because there's so many people in like Community Connect that if they hear about a, a house demolition or whatnot, they're up in arms, what are we gonna do? And it's like, this is proactively, this is how you have historic preservation. So I think if we can try to like get that information gradually out there, before we do anything major. Yes. So smooth the way for everybody. Mm -hmm. So if anyone wants to take on, I can get it reformatted. That should be a, a relatively easy thing. Um, but if there's change to text, I would need some sort of feedback on what you think we need to change to. And then I can check and see how we could potentially integrate some of this. Um, I can see if that's something that Jenny can help us with or if it really needs to be more volunteers, but I can find out on that. All right, I'm gonna hit stop share on that for now. I'm gonna go back to our PowerPoint. So I did include, which everyone had sort of asked about, and I don't know if there's questions on it. I went ahead and tried to include the last mm -hmm. um, local historic district designation that we had done. Um, and I thought it was important to note sort of like all the information that was needed in terms of, so this top item is the actual ordinance that was approved by the city council. And it has a description of all the different um, properties and then what the history and significance of them was, the environment and their outbuildings. And then um, there's a findings of fact. You have to do a findings of fact of why you established the district as you did. And then there's locator IDs and other information. And then I did include the entire finding of fact, the more detailed one with all the information and supporting documentation, which is kind of a repeat um, but I thought it was important. And then there was also, and it was easy to just do, but there was a, a letter that went to all of them saying, you've been selected to be in a city designated historic district. Um, and if I, I was only involved in this on a very, very limited basis, because I was not the staff liaison at the time, but I was the one who brought it forth to the city council once it got finished by, um, by the commission. Um, and um, we really didn't have anyone, um, we had questions, but no one in particular in opposition um, that I remember. Um, and um, it went through pretty smoothly, but it is not National Register. This is just a local designation that we did. Um, that next step to do National Register would be a, a bigger step. So I thought that would be important in looking at Westron and trying to figure out what you wanted to do for Lestron. Like this is the kind of the, the level of information that we kind of pulled together for something of a similar nature. It wasn't an actual boundary of district. It would be these individual properties, um, but clustered together somehow. And then um, I know Angela has been more focused on, she was talking about like, there is already so much information on the background that we don't really have to do a lot of that, which is why we picked this one as our first one to kind of first project for this year to, to try to complete. So with the project, I mean, I guess specifically with this one, this is Marshall Avenue over by like Rolling Ridge, correct? Uh, over by um, Maypop. Oh, okay. That's so confusing. I know, because that's... This is, the other one is the Marshall Place Historic District. Okay. This is the Marshall Avenue Commercial Historic District. Okay. Yes. And this was a project brought on from the HPC, mm -hmm. not the actual. Not the property owners. owners. Okay. Nope. And I guess in that scenario, if you did have pushback from. It would have happened here because the steps start with a public hearing at HPC. So it would not have moved forward to council if there were still. You know, there's the, there's the steps in the in the HPC ordinance 
that allow you to designate things to go forward without necessarily it being you know an, an individual. We've also had in the last few years an individual who had a particular house that they finished a bunch of work on and after they were done, they wanted to get it designated. So we did do an individual local historic house, um, but there haven't been many in the last few years. Is that the one on Clark that I saw? Yes, again? yes. Now, when you say that eight were removed, you mean that they no longer exist? They no longer exist. Okay, yeah. Um, the reason why I even have it on is that we had a list and this commission tried to or started a process to designate these. And in the time from when the last time they were working on it and now uh, yes. we've lost a few more. Um, in particular, I think it's the at least two of the ones on Simmons, the one on Hart, both of the ones on Baker, and I think the one on Ridge. So I I know the Baker ones are new houses. I know the 44 Hart is a new house, um, and the Simmons are new houses. And they're just in the last 10 years. And the 505 Ridge Avenue, that's a historic landmark, was that by the homeowner? I believe so. It was long before my time. Um, and I believe so that it was by the homeowner. But the city would have record of that. We would. Yeah, we would have the information on that. And we can add it to a, a larger overarching possibly. Have we located anyone living in a Luskin home that was that is interested in this project? Haven't started that yet. That was the last couple of meetings we've been having conversations about. Someone need that we had some letters that were drafted, but no one's really finalized what the letters should say. Then there was a conversation of, well, if we're going to have a letter drafted, are we inviting them to a meeting? And yeah. if we are, when is that meeting? What are we going to present at that meeting? So there, there's still just all these open questions. But they haven't reached out to us. No, no saying, one has no reached. One, yeah, no, no one has. Because there's out. one that's historic, so they obviously did something. That was a while ago. Yeah, yeah quite a while ago. Yeah. Well, you know, I, that one letter had been drafted um, and said basically, if, if you're interested or you'd like more information, please um, contact. And I was to contact the, uh, uh, I think it was, it was uh, contacting me. Contacting me. That maybe we could do so. I'm just kind of thinking out loud here. So y'all tell me what you think. Maybe we can do that just to kind of gauge interest and see what kind of feedback we get. And if it looks like there's, um, enough interest to um, or questions to have a public information session, not a hearing of anything, just public information. Maybe we could have that be an item on one of our regular agendas and have that be like the first item. And if people show up, great. If they don't, we'll, we'll kind of know the level of interest. And if we happen to have, you know, demolition requests or something else that night, It'll just be a little bit longer meeting, like you know, the ARB or plan commission or whatever. I think plenty of us are consultants of set in a lot of meetings waiting for our stuff to come up. So maybe we could just kind of that would be a good opener. And then um, we can decide on what would be a realistic time frame to move forward because there is a bit of background work to put together. And then um, when we have a feel for you know, who's going to accomplish that background work and what it would take to put it together, then we could have an idea of when we might want to schedule a public hearing. I mean, does that sound reasonable? It does. I would, so the letter really has to have the informational session in it already okay. as a date. Like okay. just sending a letter out to say, contact Mara if you have questions. I don't have time for that. <laughs> I, I don't. Um, so it really needs to be a, if you're going to send a letter out, one, we can't send out two rounds of letters, just the postage and the other things. It would need to be, if we're sending out a letter, if there's additional questions that someone has about it, but we would really want to set a date and just do exactly what you're saying. 
if they show up, they show up great. If they don't, then we know that there's not much interest, but it doesn't mean we can't move forward without right. interest. Right. Um, but I think just sending out one round of, let's see if we can gauge any interest first is, yeah. Good point. So, yeah. Yeah. We can just kind of say this, will, you know, this will be an information session. It'll be on this date. And um, then we can just get an idea. And that, I think that's a good way to engage people and get an idea of their comfort level and maybe be able to allay any concerns before we move forward. And we can definitely do that. It will have to be figuring out, knowing what you want to present on that evening, who's gonna present what, it, what we're gonna talk about on that evening. Some of it will need to be like, what is the process? If we do move forward with this, explaining to them what that process is gonna be, that includes having a public hearing, um, which we can, I can help put that piece together, um, but trying to figure out who's going to do those various elements and then figure out the date that we need. I would think if I got such a letter, my first question would be what's in it for me? You know, what's what really do you want from me if you want to designate my house? Um, are there benefits? Are there responsibilities? And that's um, the reason why they put together. So that one with the questions, the local one mm -hmm. was done when Webster Park was moving forward with their designation. So that's the whole reason why they did those questions. So directing someone to an updated version of that could be in the letter. Mm -hmm. Webster Park was already um, national, uh, federal yeah. um, designation. So they came back later and did the, did the local. The, the mm -hmm. local. Well, I know that this letter is not moving forward, but you know, I don't see, like Jane said, it doesn't really say what's in it for them in this letter. And that's really, what we need to do I think before so. doing I think anything we, else. You know, why do we even want to do this? Mm -hmm. Why are we doing it? And what's it mean to you? Is this going to be a burden to me? Right. Is this going to be something I'll benefit from? Yeah. I think would be certainly I'd want included in a letter if it was my house. I thought there was one that started out that said, maybe it was in this these new letters that you attached this other uh, thing. There was congratulations you live in yeah yeah i uh, saw those yeah, yeah that was that sounds a little more positive you know right. it's, a, it's it's an honor uh -huh. you live in this uh distinctive property and right. we want to re recognize that right. now in this case this was the one after it had gone through the process uh -huh. this one is yeah okay. no the the, oh. the congratulations yeah oh okay but that, no, was... that one is a different one a different version the, so there there's multiple these things here were I, the longer letter i believe it was the letter that was sent out a number of years ago oh. when they were initially trying to that's why it says there were 21 and you know talks about the 21 mm -hmm. less drawn homes um so the longer letter, I think in the discussion that we had two meetings ago, was there was a question about, was that too much information? Because at a certain point, people are just going to toss that letter if there's too much information. Yeah, wasn't and it said that there was not really a response? No, there was almost no response to those letters. Is this, is this um, the one about um, that uh, it has a little bit of information about World War II and, yes. and Bill DeWitt? There, yes. So with no response to that one, is that what you're saying? My understanding is there was little to no response to okay. that one when it got sent out. But you have to also remember, I don't, I don't specifically know that it was sent out. I know that it's in my folder as a draft letter. I know that there's a list of addresses. Whether it was actually sent out or not, I don't have something that shows that it was sent out. Yeah. or whether it just kind of floundered in kind of a subcommittee of historic preservation commission yeah, it does have some interesting information and yeah. you know the stuff about um, charles dewitt and bill dewitt um that's more more local interest and you know i think there was some mention made about 
if we when we do send out the Lestron letter, maybe having a couple of just a couple of pages about Lestrons or something simple to you know clip to the back because I I do think that um, you know people might be aware of um, the significance of, of these houses or not. So you know I I think if they're not giving them a little buzz about why this is like a really cool thing um, would uh, be positive and stir up some excitement. Yeah. A nice little attachment. And you can even include some of the points about the advantages of um, the designation and stuff like that. And Mara, you were saying if we send out a letter, we don't necessarily have to send out a letter to homeowners. Is that correct? Well, at a, certain, be... at a certain point, if you hold the hearing, like if you hold the hearing, if you, I mean, you can go through this process without getting gauging any conversation if you don't want to. Um, the way the process works, um, it has um, and I'm not saying that we go that route versus sending the letter out, but I just kind of want to. Um, yeah, and it says nominations shall be made to the HPC on a form prepared and submitted by the owner of record if someone wants to nominate it specifically. Um, by motion of the HPC acting as a body. So that's your other option is you can all as a body decide to nominate or by a motion of the city council as an acting body. So the council has the ability to say that they want to nominate something. Nominations are submitted to the building commissioner, which actually we re rewrote all of these to say the planning di director um, who shall within seven days of a notification, we, um, mail a notification of the intent to nominate to the owner of record of the nominated property. So then we do have that sort of starts that time frame. Within a certain time frame, we have to send letters to all the property owners um, that say we're going to start the nomination process. There's a whole series of criteria for nomination, which we already know that this has been nominated in other areas of the country. So we shouldn't have any concerns with it meeting the criteria. Um, it says the HPC shall conduct a public hearing on each proposed designation of a landmark or historic district in order to obtain the viewpoints of affected property owners, residents, and other interested parties. There's a notice that has to be um, either hand delivered or sent by first class mail to the owners, according to the county real estate records, um, at least seven days in advance of a public hearing. Um, and then we have to post the notice at City Hall and post it on all properties at least seven days in advance of the hearing. So signs will have to go at each of the properties, um, letting them know that we're designating it. Um, you all have to make a determination in writing within 15 days after the initial hearing date. Um, and it continues on of like what you need to uh, be included in your determination, which is why I gave you the copy of, of this so you can see your findings of fact. Um, and then it says, upon receipt of the recommendations of the HPC, the council schedules a public hearing. And that has to have it in the paper twice. So we've put it in the newspaper. And then the first publication has to be at least 15 days prior to the date of the hearings. Um, within 15 days after approval by the council, um, the ordinance has to be sent to the owner, which is why you had this lovely letter that says, congratulations, congratulations. you're in a historic district. So it's very, very clearly marked out on how everything goes, but no, you do not have to, before you start this process, have an informational meeting unless you want to. How did it work out with the other ones? Did they do the informational or? I don't believe they did the informational. I haven't actually, so that one went through again, kind of, they were kind of doing it and I wasn't, you know, we had all, so, we were so busy, I wasn't paying attention. And he would give me an update of, oh yeah, they're moving forward or, oh yeah, we had our hearing. And then it was like, oh, you need to take this to council. So I took it to council. Um, I don't remember much. It wasn't, a, it was a small number of properties. Um, I think there was maybe one who came in and had some concerns, just again, similar to the, the myths. Um, and then since it got approved, one of the properties was a vacant piece of land and a structure was built um, meeting the essential, the, the basics of sort of volumetrically meeting. It's a modern building, but volumetrically it meets what had been there in its place on that lot. Um, and it's kind of brought a little bit more to that 
that strip. So it's interesting. So do you think it would be helpful to have like a timeline or like steps and kind of calendar things out what you want to do at each month to make sure that you know we, we meet all the steps but also like do you want to have an informational meeting when do you have to have a letter done because i know you guys have been working on this for a while so I, it might if you don't already have it might be helpful to have like a like a roadmap plan to get you through all the steps that you know mara just talked through that's their decision yeah definitely that's that they have to make that decision sure no yes i'm just yeah I'm just wondering if you're trying to think of what the benefits would be of sending an informational letter, having a meeting versus kind of moving forward with this. Yeah. Especially since our budget for mailings and such is so. <laughs> 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 I know. so, so do, do know that wouldn't come out of your that amount of money. Okay. Um, I just general mailings and letters like this, things for public hearings and other things like that, they usually come under just our standard public hearing budget and some of our other things. Because this isn't something like you're having two or three a month. You would be doing like essentially one. Um, so I wouldn't be concerned about that part of it. It's more um, making some decisions on if you needed to hire someone to do research, that would be coming out of that $1,000 budget. but you all have to make a decision. And I know it's hard because Angela's not here and Angela is really the person who's been spearheading this particular project. So it is a little hard tonight without having her here. Um, well, and I just feel like sometimes we get caught up on, okay, we have, if we're gonna send a letter, we have to write this letter and then we have drafts and then it kind of goes from meeting to meeting. And I just don't know if it's, super beneficial to do that step if one we possibly don't hear from anybody or two I mean maybe we get a few pieces of feedback and but then we decide to continue to move on I mean if you decide you don't want to have the informational meeting and you just want to put everything together and decide that you're going to hold a public hearing then we can schedule out that public hearing um, but we have to have sort of again You've got to have this kind of documentation and information. And I know Angela had found a lot of this background information um, that you that sh that's already been pulled together by other cities um, mm -hmm. as they've done it. So a lot of the history is already in there. Um, but you do, we do have to kind of think through on the various findings of facts. Um, you know, we're going to send letters to them. We're going to have a meeting. We're going to have. Um, it might be that someone goes and observes the structures, you know, that we tell everybody to go observe the structures. Um, we have to put the signs out. Right? There's just all of those different steps. We do need to, you need to decide what you want to do. And to me, the, the benefit of maybe sending out a oh. letter about an information session and answering people's questions in advance um maybe it would be less shocking <laughs> i agree i think it's yeah, yeah i definitely I think, think it's like a some. courteous yes. thing to do mm -hmm. yeah i i mean personally if um it was me i would i would want um to be notified beforehand and have the opportunity to actually sit down and talk with people or zoom in and talk with people instead of you know i i i don't know that there's any benefit in people feeling potentially waylaid. You know, um, I just don't think that that would be in the project's best interest. Um, so you know, it may be a, a little bit extra work, and I, I appreciate what you're saying, Anne, about you know we just coming up with a, a letter. But I I really do think there is benefit to um, making people aware in advance and not having them feel like you know. Yeah, and so I know Angela drafted a letter. She drafted the short letter, and then, and then we, we put the long letter in there. So we had both, um, and we just. So I think that's that is our point of action right now. That if we are in agreement that we do want to move forward with sending a letter out, I think we have to decide if 
the letter that Angela drafted is the one. If we need to add some points that were discussed tonight, and maybe if she, if we can send those to her and she can add it in her letter and then send it out, if we can kind of get that moving. Yeah. So you do need to pick a date. The, this is the thing okay. that keeps holding us up is we that in the letter, <laughs> so, in the letter, you need a date. And when um, we, okay, so then we'll say we pick a date for that meeting. I'm assuming we have to have a quorum for that meeting. Yes. Okay. Well, you have to have a quorum for any meeting. Yeah. So you have to have a quorum. Now, that meeting can be on one of your regular meeting dates. So it's, again, we're not, we're not trying to add anything extra in here, but we just have to make that just so the decision needs to be made of um if you're sending that invite out or whatever that letter is what do you want to include in that letter is it short is it long um do you want to invite them to one of your regular meetings when you're going to discuss moving forward nomination so that they can be there or in, in, and if no one shows up you can just discuss it amongst yourselves Whatever that date is, you have to have enough time in advance to prepare whatever you're going to present. So us saying you're doing it August 9th won't necessarily help us. Um, and then once you have that, you're going to want to have a timeline ready for, that, for them to say, here's when we plan to nominate it. So making sure that we know where we are on that. So I know there's just a number of questions, but some of those decisions have to be made. And I know, again, we don't have Angela here who is spearheading this one. Um, but if those are made. So if it isn't the August meeting, we've got a September and we've got an October meeting. So, you know, you can think ahead of time of, do you want to do it in September? It's right, you know, right. I think you're right after Labor Day weekend. So, you you know, again, kind of a possibility. Um, and then you also have October. Um, yes, so the September meeting is on September 13th. So it's not the Tuesday right after Labor Day, but the week after. If you do in October, um, it's October 11th. Um, and then November, we might even want to think about so November 8th is HPC and it's also election day. So we might want to think about I hadn't thought about that. We might want to think about potentially moving uh, HPC that to a different date in November. But whatever you wanted to decide, I just want to make sure again, like we need to be prepared. So whatever it, it, it's it's like dominoes. If we send the letter out, the letter has to have a date for a meeting. If that date for that meeting is set, we need to have, what are we gonna talk about at that meeting? At that meeting, are we gonna talk about when you're gonna to plan to have a hearing? And if you're gonna to plan to have a hearing, do we have all the documentation we need to hold that hearing? So each of those kind of falls on top of the next one and we've gotta make sure those are in order. I, I think that um, sending out the letter about, um, you know, just to get people an opportunity to um, ask questions which is, is a good idea. Um, I, I do take your point, Mara, that, you know, we're saying, okay, we're gonna have this information session, but we're gonna have to have our ducks in a row about who's gonna present what. And since Angela has been the one spearheading this, she would likely need to be the one who would be the spokesperson about the restaurants and that sort of thing. So maybe we would need to have her on board with what, date would work for her. Um, but in the meantime, potentially we could send to her some of our comments from this evening about having um, the informational letter go out and, and uh, maybe with some of the tweaks that we've talked about, like making um, more emphasis on um, what's in it for me and a, a real positive tone. Um, and then once we uh, get the letter tweaked, get Angela on board with a date when she can be there, then we can send the letter out with the date in it. Um, and I can understand where, yeah, we need to have our ducks in a row about who's gonna do what with the rest of the process, 
but would we really need to announce a timeline at that information meeting? Not a specific timeline necessarily, but if someone's going to come, if someone does show up to that meeting, you don't want to say to them, well, we're not sure when we're going to start the nomination. You, you don't want to leave it that open. Well, we might. What if they all come in and say, this is a terrible idea? Then I'm going to say, well, let's abandon it. Again, even if they all say it's a terrible idea, you still have the ability because if you want to protect those structures, you know, it's that question of people keep saying, are we going to be Kirkwood? And I hate using that as that example. Um, but, you know, I have people comment all the time as you're driving down Kirkwood in Kirkwood areas and neighborhoods, they, they're losing house after house after house, multiple on one block. We haven't gotten to that point yet. But if we've already lost how many restaurants, are we at that point of whether they like it or not, do we think it's important to designate it? So even if they don't like it, they have that opportunity to say that at a public hearing doesn't mean that you necessarily have to abandon this project. So I just, I, flip side, just want to make sure that that's important to note. I just remember in Webster Park when we uh, put the, uh, the National Historic Register, my wife helped do that. There was 250 structures because it was garages and houses. And that was a lot of work. And that was an easier process because you were just getting the, the designation nationally. And uh, it's just kind of bragging rights, really. But where the action was, was the, uh, the city, having the city, the local historic. And at that point, there was an informational packet that went out to every household. And it was prepared by the officers of the Webster Park Association. Had lots of questions. There were, there were meetings internally about whether to go forward. There was some opposition because of the, the concerns raised. There was, but I think it was like a two thirds majority to go forward and uh, it went forward. But all that legwork was done not by historic. This commission didn't do anything that I'm aware of. Correct. Other than just said, yeah, we, we think it's a great idea. Correct. but. Historic Preservation did the commercial <laughs> district, Marshall, Marshall okay. Place commercial district. So, you know, yes, there's, there's both. There are both, um, you know, if, if a whole group in Tuxedo Park suddenly said, we want to do a historic district, they could pull all that stuff together, give all the information to you all and do that. That's why there's three different nomination levels. There's a, there's a, someone comes in and wants to nominate their own properties. There's a historic preservation commission can nominate properties and city council can nominate properties. They're yeah. all in the ordinance. Yeah, that's good. So you just have to remember that there's there are yeah. there's a very different process from doing something like yeah. the Webster Park Historic District versus doing something like this. Well, I remember with Tuxedo because there was some energy. I don't know if you were still on the board at that point or not, but we were trying to find um, those in the neighborhood to have like a groundswell of interest. Zippo interest. No one wanted it anyway. Yeah. Or we couldn't find that person. There wasn't that energy at all. Yeah. And I mean, maybe this is like small enough that we're not overwhelmed by the process. It's a little bit bigger than the Marshall Commercial District, but not much um, in yeah. the grand scheme of things once you take out all the removed structures. Yeah, I, I personally think that, you know, let's just um, go ahead with what we've discussed, revise the letter, get Angela on board with a date when she can be there, um, and just have it be an agenda item, <clears throat> perhaps first on the agenda of a regular meeting and have the information session. And um, perhaps by that time, we'll have more of an idea of a time frame about when we are planning to move forward with things. But we can let people know also that it is not carved in stone, um, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that that would be appropriate because it's not like we can make any particular guarantees about those time frames. But just to give people an idea that, yes, this is an ongoing process and it is quite a process and it'll take a while, but without saying precisely what dates everything is going to be. So that would get us going in the right direction, I think. I definitely think that we do need to kind of 
get ha have a deadline as to okay let's have this letter drafted ready maybe have it ready to go by our next meeting obviously leave the date blank and then at next meeting we say this is the letter we're going to discuss hopefully you know angel will be here and we'll have a quorum and we'll be able to discuss this but to say this is when we're going to move forward with this is the date that's going on the letter and get the letter out and start moving i agree whether that be like we meet next month and say okay we're going to meet we're going to have this meeting at our september meeting or we decide Regardless, if we get pushed back or not, we still want to go ahead with designation. So maybe we push it to the October uh, meeting. So we have a little bit more time to get all of our information rolling after that. I think really that that's it sounds more likely to me that October might be a good date. I mean, I think so too. Kids, uh, you know, we won't be at the back to school Labor Day end of summer crunch. We won't be in the election stuff. Um, I think that maybe and it'll give us plenty of time yes so we're not feeling crunched between August and September to get every piece of information we need but I think if we at least have our letter ready to go by our next meeting and decide on the date and then from there we can say as of this meeting the letter's good to go out sounds good yeah I agree I wish we had someone in one of these houses that had some energy on this project. I'm with Just you, one. Doug. Yeah, I was you thinking know. the same thing. The, the one on Old Watson is the one closest to me, and it's in disrepair. I, I can't imagine that person wanting to come on board to be designated. They're just what is, living out their lives. There. What is the one I just passed? Is it over at Blackburn Park? That's Bridge. the Five High Bridge. Okay, that's 505 Bridge. That's the one that's actually the historic landmark. Mm -hmm. The one you can see from Edgar Road yes. there on the corner. That really you can tell they the... very much embrace the yes. Yeah. lustrum. Yes, yes. That so the one. it's like maybe that's the person. <laughs> it looks like the best kept <laughs> of them. The yeah. butts on Hazel aren't too bad. But yeah. the, the one uh, on Simmons, uh, 228, that's over by me. That's that one's in excellent condition. Is it? Yeah, it's not owner occupied. Um, it's it's owned by someone who rents it out. And I will have to say that in the 25 years I've lived there, they've done an outstanding job getting really responsible tenants who keep up that property. It is it's really in pretty nice shape. Yeah. That's good. The one on South Maple is right on the edge of possibly being demolished. Awesome. It was a rental property. Uh, Schnooks Desco owns it, mm -hmm. and uh, they no longer have someone living in it. And I think that's what we're going to find if we don't pursue designation with these, just given right. the style, the age, the size, they're going to be targets for sure. I mean, there we are, but you talked about uh, becoming another Kirkwood. I mean, if somebody wants to demolish that one on Maple, will that come to us first? It will. But anything over 50 years old will come to us. Yeah. So what is years. the difference between it coming to us and it being in a So there's two different things. If it comes just as a over 50 years old, you're only looking at a basic set of regulations. Okay. When it is historically designated, it goes through a hearing like we had okay. earlier. So there's the, the bigger um, steps, which is a formal hearing if it's in a historic district, because it's already nominated, they have to prove many other factors, the packets, a whole lot more information. When it's just a, de a, a demolition, we're looking to see if we want to designate it to try to protect it. And that's our first opportunity to look at that. Um, so it's a pretty big difference in terms of okay. the steps. So 505 would have a harder time than 441 Maple. Exactly. Okay. So what is the process for now communicating with Angela? Well, she, she'll be here at the next meeting. I mean, but, but if, we can email. If we have to have the letter by then, she probably needs to see it. So I can email out. So similar to 
you know, how we normally do things, I can email out a, here's the last two letters to everyone, to everybody on the commission. Um, we're looking at possibly having the October 11th HBC be the date. Um, the group had suggested this, 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 you know, like basically put the basics in and just give it all to you. And I would have a free for all. You have a free for all. Now <laughs> you all can't, which you all know, I blind copy all of you because you can't talk to each other through that right. means. Mm -hmm. um, but you can send information back to me and I can consolidate what information we receive and then move forward from there. Okay. So like if you want to write, a, if you like have in mind a paragraph that you would like mm -hmm. to include in that letter, you can email it to Mara. Mara can compile it all. And hopefully we can get that draft rolling to where when we meet in August, it's pretty much good to go then. And knowing how my week is, what I'm probably going to do is just get it done because I'm gone all next week. Mm -hmm. good for you. Yeah. So I will get that out as quickly as possible. So then you all have as much time as possible to look at it okay. and review it. And then that can add Angela and Jim and Michael all into it so that we can get them all on board with this, this next couple of steps too. All right. Okay. All right. Next meeting is August 9th. Okay. Other, anything else you want me to add onto the agenda? Um, do I need to send another reminder out? Do you want me to separately re or resend the thing about the um, the webinar about the funding? Um, or does everybody can find it on the chat? I've got that in. Got it. Okay, perfect. I won't worry about that. Okay. Okay, do we have a motion? I still move. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 You want to pose? <laughs> Have a good evening. Yes. Yes. See, where are you going? Bye, Emily. Bye. Um, I am. My kid is 